Overbetting. It's confusing. I'm going to show you how to implement overbets in your game profitably, when to use them for value, when to use them as a bluff, and how to implement them on every street. We'll start off with when to use overbets on the flop. Let's jump in. On the flop, I'm going to choose a size where our opponents are going to raise off their very strong hands and call with their weak hand. So we see a flop here, jack nine deuce, we have pocket nines. And when we go around half pot here, usually that's going to force our opponents to raise off hands like pocket deuces and jack nine suited. Hands that we cooler that are going to put in more money for us. And also it's going to entice our opponent to continue with a bunch of weak shit. Maybe hands like pocket eights or pocket sixes with a spade that we essentially have drawing dead. So this is very, very good when we're value betting to choose a size where they raise off their strong shit and call with their weak shit, which means when we see bet here with a hand like seven six of diamonds and our opponent just check calls well getting to the turn most of the time the best hand they're going to have is a hand like ace jack or king jack which is really really good for us for bluffing across turns and rivers because it just greatly greatly reduces the likelihood that we run into two pair or a set if we continue barreling here with a hand that has very very low equity or air but what if there's a situation where our opponents will not raise off their strong shit and call with a weak shit so let me show you we have pocket sevens here opening on the button our opponent calls in the big blind flop comes a seven deuce here and we flop middle set now the problem with this board is this board is maybe the most static and the most dry flop in all of live poker most people in poker understand the difference between dry and wet a dry board just doesn't have a lot of draws a wet board has a lot of draws static versus dynamic is actually more important i found for the amount opponents will fast play their hands and a static board simply means the nuts are not going to change very often on the turn so we look at a flop like this pocket aces are still going to be the nuts on almost every turn card in the deck a dynamic board would be where a lot of cards change the nuts on the turn. Even if we bet 20 here, our opponents may feel very, very comfortable just slow playing with a hand like pocket deuces or ace deuce or ace seven suited. And the problem is when we have a very strong hand, they're not raising off their strong shit on a board that's just static. Also, our opponents probably aren't calling with a bunch of weak shit on this board when we bet small either. What hand do our opponents put us on when we raise pre-flop and then see bet on the flop on an ace high board? Usually they're like, hmm, he's got ace king. So when we see bet on this board, I would be very, very surprised if our opponents continue with under pairs to the seven. Hands like pocket sixes, pocket fives, pocket fours, stuff like that. Whereas on jack nine deuce, I would just argue our opponents are gonna continue with under pairs to the nine almost all the time. They're just gonna continue with pocket eights, pocket sevens, pocket sixes. But on this board, on the ace high board, betting small here on this board doesn't really get our opponents to raise off their strong shit or call with a weak shit. So it's not that great when we have value. And when we're bluffing here, say we have a hand like eight, nine of spades, right? We've got three to a backdoor straight flush. It's also not that good to choose the side when we're bluffing here because the problem is our opponent is not going to raise off their strong hands right now. If we go half pot on this flop with a hand like eight, nine of spades and our opponent calls, well, they are not capped getting to the turn. And the problem is if we go big on the turn, our opponents may slow play a hand like pocket deuces or pocket sevens or a seven suited again on the turn. And now we're just gonna run into a brick wall bluffing across turns and rivers. And if we go small on the turn again, well, our opponent may raise off some of their two pair and sets on the turn, sure. But now getting to the river, they could just have a lot of ace queen ace jack and the pot's very very small because we bet small on the flop and small on the turn and so our opponent's just going to hero us down a lot with top pair because our opponents aren't going to raise off their strong shit and call with their weak shit on this board it is not good to choose this kind of small size with either our value or our bluffs so the adjustment i would make on this particular board i would employ an overbet or check strategy i'd be putting almost all of my strong hands into the overbet category and you may be wondering well aren't we getting to get exploited if we don't check back any strong hands well, I'd be checking back a lot of ace X here, to be clear. I'd be checking back some ace jack, ace 10, ace nine, etc. But I'd just be putting all my hands in the let's start putting in the big money category right now. So pocket sevens, ace seven, ace deuce, ace king, ace queen. All of these hands would just be over betting on the flop, trying to get the money in. Now you may be wondering where are the bluffs coming from? Well, the bluffs are going to come from our hands that block them having very strong hands that could call us down. I think blockers are overused in live poker and people misapply them all the time. But this is what one of these spots where I actually would use blockers to inform my strategy. And I would want to use hands that have either a deuce or a seven in them to start my bluffs here on the flop. Because if you think about if we go over bet, over bet jam on this board, what hands are going to call us down? Well, really only two pair in sets. So having a deuce or a seven in our hand as the hands that start over bet bluffing here on the flop are very, very good. If we think we can get hands like ace queen, ace jack, ace 10 to fold by the river, this would be the spot on the flap where I would start using overbets. Hey guys, real quick. My name is Mark Goon. I've made over seven figures playing poker.
Wow, you're so dominant. And I make these videos to help you guys climb past low stakes. So hopefully one day you can join us at Hungry Horse Poker, where we can help you learn to crush mid to high stakes and beyond. If you're enjoying the video, all I ask, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys. Have a gentle day. On the turn, I am using overbets when our opponent is capped. All right, so first let me show you an example where our opponent is not capped. Say we open a six of spades on the button, our opponent calls, flop comes jack nine deuce, we see bet small. Remember, we're gonna choose a size where they raise off their strong shit and call with a reach shit if possible. Definitely possible on a dynamic wet board such as this one. So we go small, our opponent check calls. Now the turn is a four. Is our opponent capped here? And I would say no, our opponent is not capped. And the reason why they're not capped when the flushing card comes in on the turn is usually in live poker, opponents are going to play their flush draws too passively. They're not going to have any two pair of sets here. Those hands raise off on the flop, but flush draws for the most part do not raise off on the flop. So on this turn, our opponent is not capped. So I would not be choosing big sizing. Let's say they check it over to us. If our opponent does have like a 10 high flush or an eight high flush and we bet small on this turn, well, our opponent is going to put in more money for us. Same kind of concept as the flop, right? Where they raise off their strong shit and call with their weak shit. And if our opponent does have a weak hand, a hand like queen 10 with a 10 of spades or something like that, that we have essentially drawing dead here by betting small, we're also going to entice our opponent to call with their weak shit. So when our opponents are not capped on the turn, again, I would be choosing a more moderate or small sizing. But let's go back to the example where we have pocket nines. We see bet on the flop, our opponent check calls, and now the turn is a complete blank. In this example, our opponent is capped because remember, our opponents are raising off two pair and sets at a very high frequency on the flop. So getting to this turn, which really doesn't change anything except bringing in a couple combinations of pocket fours sometimes, really the best hand our opponent can have here is a hand like ace jack or king jack. And so is it possible to choose a size here on the turn where our opponent raises off their strong shit and calls with their weak shit? Not really, because our opponent's not going to raise off a hand like ace jack or king jack here, and they just don't have two pair or sets because those hands raise off on the flop. So when our opponent is capped, I generally want to choose a very, very big size. And with pocket nines, I would want to choose a very, very big size here because our opponent is just never folding ace jack or king jack or an ace high flush draw. So we can go very, very big here on the turn. I'd probably choose a size something like $150 on this turn. If we had a bluff here on this turn, again, if we had seven, six of diamonds that started an airball bluff on the flop, I would also want to choose an overbet size here because again, our opponents are going to be completely inelastic. They're just not going to fold. Top pair, top kicker, ace high flush draws, queen high flush draws. None of those hands are folding. The best bluff is a bluff where our opponent calls the flop, calls the turn, and then folds the river. So if we think we can get our opponents to fold their ace high flush draws when they break on the river, maybe some queen jack, some jack 10, some king jack, on the river, if we put in a 2x overbet jam on the river, I think that's pretty realistic. Well, we want our opponents to start piling in more money on the turn when we're bluffing as well. All right, now let's talk about rivers. And in general, on flops and turns, I generally play my value and my bluffs the same way because they have the same goals. My value wants them to put in as much money as possible getting to the river. And my bluffs also want my opponents to put in as much money as possible getting to the river. So this is going to sound very elementary. It's going to sound so simple and ridiculous, but I think poker can be simple if you let it be simple. On the river, I'm going to choose over bets with bluffs when my opponents cannot have very strong hands. And also on the river, I'm gonna choose over bets with value when my opponents can have very strong hands. All right, so again, we have pocket nines on this turn. We are going to over bet because our opponents are capped. Now we get to the river, which is a blank in offsuit three, and our opponent checks over to us. So with value in this spot, I probably would not want to choose a huge over bet here because I think the best hand our opponent has, again, getting to this river when they check call flop, check call turn, is probably going to be a hand like ace jack. So I'd want to choose a size with our value here here that targets ace jack. So maybe a size somewhere in the 400 ballpark, a very, very small overbet. Where I would go crazy here with the overbet, if we had seven, six of diamonds on this river, I would be choosing the big boy overbet size because our opponent cannot have a very strong hand. So if I had seven, six of diamonds here, I would be piling in all of the money, $810, because I think we can get our opponents to fold. Certainly hands like king jack, queen jack, jack 10 on this river at a very high frequency. So if I had a bluff here, when our opponents cannot have a very strong strong hand getting to the river, that's where I would use the big boy overbet bluff. Let's say we overbet this turn and now the river is an ace and we get here with pocket nines. Well, this is a river where our opponent can have a lot of strong hands. What strong hands can they have? Well, they can have ace jack here, ace deuce of spades. They can have a hand like ace four of spades. So on this river, our opponent can have just a ton of two pair getting to the river that's just never going to fold. So when our opponent can have strong hands and we can beat those strong hands, that's when I would choose the big boy overbet size 
on this river with value. If I got to this river with a bluff with a hand like seven, six of diamonds, this would not be a spot where I would want to choose the big boy overbet size. I'd probably just want to get hands like king jack, queen jack, jack 10 to fold on this river, and that would not take a very big bet. So this would be a spot where I'd go huge with my value and pretty, pretty small with my bluffs, which would be the opposite of the strategy on a blank river. All right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video on when to overbet and how to implement it in your game profitably. Hopefully it skyrockets your win rate and turns you into the biggest boy possible. Thank you guys and have a gentle day.